Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Cluvo. I recently purchased a lot of random vintage trims and laces on eBay, and they have really been inspiring me. I know that maybe you won't be able to find the exact same trims and laces that I'm using in this collection, but I hope you will be inspired and you will be digging through your own collection. Today, we'll be making this ruffled lace angel ornament. She's fun and easy, so let's get started. I purchased a lot of sort of retro craft trims on eBay, and among the items was this lace. I didn't really understand what it was. I just assumed it was this little bit just wrapped around, but it's actually this nice, wide, interesting lace. This center um, is a ribbon, and then there's gathered laces, one, two, three, one, two, three, going in opposite directions. So when I try to just gather it up like this, that didn't work because these laces are, are up this way. And so I decided to try cutting these two top layers off and then adding them to the bottom and then having this be sort of like the collar, and that worked pretty well. So I'm going to cut a nine inch length of this, and I'm gonna go over to my iron and deal with these little bits that have been caught up in the wrapping and make sure everything's flat and smooth. I'm going to remove these two layers of lace. I'll get some longer scissors and um, then turn them around and apply them here beneath this bottom layer. Here we go. I don't have to be really careful because I know this top edge is going to be gathered. And the bottom, I'm just, I, the first time I made this, I, um, I found this little layer of nylon here and I sewed it by hand to the corresponding edge here. Can you see that? So there's a little nylon on the back here. Here, one more time. Okay, right there. And then I decided that was way too much trouble. So afterward, I just, I think it's fine. I'm just going to top stitch it. Let's see, we're gonna go this way, I think. And I'm gonna top stitch it just right across kind of overlapping about a quarter of an inch. It won't be as, e it won't be equally spaced with these um, higher ruffles, but that's okay. So at the bottom, they'll be a little bit closer right here, but that that's absolutely fine. I'm just gonna top stitch along here to join this uh, bottom two ruffles to this bigger piece. Now I will fold this right sides together. I'm gonna pin and match this little flat section, and then just seam up this back seam. Did I say that right? Sew up the back seam. Now I'll turn this to the right side, and I'll just have a look. It looks good, and I'm gonna set that aside. If you've been with me for a while, you know that this is pretty much the start of every angel, right? This is about 12 to 14 inches of 1 16th inch satin ribbon, ivory ribbon. And then we'll do two lengths of this six inch tool. This is kind of the fine filmy tool, not the scratchy net tool, if that makes sense. So I have two lengths, that's probably 18 inches. This is plenty, I'll be trimming that off for sure. And then I'm gonna tie it in the center just a square knot in the center there. And then send the end through the face. I already made my faces and of course, you can find the instructions for the face in my Focus on Faces video. Here we go. Here's how it looks. It's really easy. So I'm gonna pull this through until, see that top of the tool? It comes right to the top of the hole. 
This is a 20 millimeter head bead. I'm tying off the ends up here, just in an overhand knot, and that'll become the hanger. And then I'm gonna add a little smudge of glue here. And then I'm going to um, just slide the head bead down over the tool so that that smudge of glue is in the back like that. And she's ready to go. Okay, now I have a doubled strand of quilting thread, a nice long needle, and I like to use a thimble. And I'm gonna gather up the top edge. I'm going to gather it about halfway through the top ruffle and I'm intending for this top ruffle to kind of um, show a little bit like a collar. So I'm just going through a single layer. I'm not going through both layers, just a single layer all the way around the circle. I'm just using a big running stitch. There I am, back around. And now I'll carefully draw this up. Have a look. You see this little edge, um, the ribbon, it kind of forms, kind of reminds me of maybe her shoulders or a little shawl or sleeves or something, but it's not really exactly um, essential to the design. But I do like the way that top lace. See how it comes up like a little collar? I really like that. So I'm drawing that nice and tight and then I'm going to wrap it nice and tight and then I'll go through from side to side front to back and secure the thread in the back. And I'm going to trim off this extra tool And have a look. This is a 20 millimeter head bead and the total height of this dress is four and a half inches. Just uh, for your reference. Now I'm going to add a little bow from this and some flowers. These are the paper forget-me-nots. They're not hard to find. You can search on eBay or Etsy or even Timu to find these. All right, so first I'll tie a little bow. I like the streamers to be about the length of the dress. Let's see. That looks right. I like the loops of the bow to sort of point down but some people like them to go out. That's fine too, whatever you like. And I'm gonna add a little bit of hot glue here to the center and press it here below her collar. For the flowers, I'm gonna pull out one of these little clusters. There are five flowers plus a couple little buds. I like to use this white forest tape you only need a tiny bit. And I'm going to wrap this up close. And then use my um, wire cutters to trim it about a quarter of an inch. So this all sticks together. Can you see that? Okay, then I'll add some glue to that little stem part and I'm going to just press it into the front of her dress. Don't put it too high because you don't wanna obscure her face. That looks perfect. There we go. And now for her hair, I'm going to use my favorite loopy mohair. And I do have, um, yeah, I do have a video called Ruby's Hair Technique, but this is easy. Just hold it like this. I use, this is my left hand, and then wrap one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and 
Be generous with these uh, tails. Don't cut them too short. And then I'm just tying it in the center like that. You need two bundles, one for the back and one for the front. Nice long tail, hold it like this. One and two and three and four and five and a nice long tail. Now take the top tail and go all the way around. Complete revolution around the center of the bundle. And then tie it off like that, the, a square knot in the center. Pull it nice and tight and then trim the tails. So there's my second bundle. And I do have a video just on this called Ruby's Hair Technique. All right, so first I'm going to spread some hot glue on the back of her head. I'm careful not to get the ribbon caught up in the glue. And then I'm just gonna um, glue the center of the bundle right behind the ribbon up there. And then I'm pressing the loops into the back of her head. Now the wings will cover the back of her head. So it's not super important to get it to look all pretty back there. I just like for there to be a little bit showing on the sides like that. Now the second bundle's for the front. And this one I try to be a little bit more careful with. I'll start by squeezing out some glue right here in front of the ribbon. I'm pressing the knot right there. And then I'm going to twist each side toward the back of the head to form her hairstyle. Oh, I hate for you to see my glue gun, hold on. Okay, so I squeezed out a line of glue along the side of her face there and then just twist this section toward the back. And then again on this side, twist this toward the back. I'm gonna add a line of glue right here and then press that into the glue. I'm going to touch it up a little bit, maybe adding a little bit of glue to secure that better. And I think it looks pretty good. Now for her halo, I just need two inches of this 20 gauge gold wire. This is just craft wire from the craft store. I like to use my thimble to shape the halo into sort of a U like that. And then I'll add a little bit of glue to each end. So there's a drop on each end and then I just sort of press that in like that. Now we have something fun for the wings. I have created a collage of sort of mock vintage papers. <laughs> um, there's a piece of cardstock in the middle and then I just sort of glued torn paper on both sides. I'm going to use this scalloped circle die, which is about four inches across and my die cutting machine to cut out this shape from, um, from this cardstock, from this collage, like that. Here we go. It's always kind of a surprise to see how it turns out and, you know, which kind of pieces are featured. Now I'm going to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to do a zigzag all the way around, just a light zigzag that's going to match the tones in the paper. I just don't want any of these edges popping up, lifting up, which uh, they don't look like they're going to, but sometimes they do. There we go. Now I'm sure it's hard to see, but there is a zigzag around there and both sides are covered with the collage, but this is the top. On the underside, uh, there's a little bit more distinct perforation, and so I'm gonna be sure that this is the front. 
I have my paper scissors here and I'm just gonna cut straight across. I'm choosing this um, you know, from here to here because I notice on the back there's a definite um, horizontal line. Now, I did not zigzag across the top and that is just like this cut edge with scissors. I've done different things. I've tried um, inking it, you know, the way that the super cool scrapbookers do. But I really like this treatment. This is a tape, so it has adhesive. It's just from the craft store, but it's fabric. When I bought it, I thought I was buying um, washi tape. This doesn't have to be perfect, but I am going to try to line it up here. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to cover it completely edge to edge. The edges don't have to be perfectly straight. You know, just kind of cover it. It, um, you know, we have, there's a sort of a random effect, but look how cute that is. That looks really good. I'm gonna do this one too. And this is the front. So I'm cutting a piece of this tape. It's it came in a bundle. It was like a like a plastic bag with maybe like 12 different prints. And this one just happens to be the one that works. And then sort of line it up. It doesn't really stretch. And it just, I don't know, I just really like it because it gives another texture here. There's the torn paper, there's the sewing, there's you know, then there's the little fabric edge. And um, so now which one do I like better? I like this one because it has more color, but actually she's gonna um, cover most of the color anyway. So I'll just squeeze out some glue right here. I try to keep it in line with the center here and then press that onto the back. Like that. And then about like that. I'm gonna hold that for a second. And she's done. What do you think? Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my videos, please like, share, and subscribe.